48 hours ultimatum from today, Friday, 23rd of October, 2020, until Sunday, 25th of October, 2020, to leave Yoruba land. From Monday, the 26th of October, 2020, we will close the roads, stop all the vehicles across Yoruba land, and every evil national will be dealt with accordingly. What happened at Ore in Ondo State in August 1967 are just highlights of what we're going to do from Monday, 26 October 2020. We are kind enough to give you a 48 hours time to pack your things and move to your own region peacefully. We will stop all cars, taxis, passenger vehicles, and we are going to enter into workplaces, business premises, security sites, searching everyone. Any evil who is found will be dealt with mercilessly. It has been long that we have tolerated your criminality across Yoruba land. We requested the government across our region to regulate your influx into your rebellion. But it seems our request is being ignored. Now we will deal with it in our own way. So please be warned and do as we have requested and save yourself and your family. Do not say we did not want you. We are asking you to pack your things and go back to Igbo land. We don't want any Igbo national anymore in Yoruba land. We are tired of you. Enough is enough. You have now been won. Thank you. Wow. Hmm. I'm sure you guys heard the guy very well. I thought uh, maybe he has a... Uh repented you know sometime two years ago last year also he was on this uh, mission talking about the ebos and all manner of things saying all manner of things all of a sudden again because he lives in the uk all of a sudden again he retraced or he, he, you know retraced his steps back and uh, i'm i'm even surprised that uh, he's coming up with this kind of a um this kind of a talk and you will not be surprised because a lot of people will say, oh, who sent him? Nobody sent him. You know, now the narratives now, since uh, this whole uh, uh, instance of a thing started, they've ch started changing the narratives. You could see that uh, Bola met, you know, he just surfaced yesterday and, you know, he was just not uh, even bothered about what happened. He was even laughing at those psycho fans around him. were even laughing at what he said. And the deputy governor made a statement we a lot of people have been making that statement but not until when i heard that from the deputy governor saying that say, oh yoruba saudi whatever should not allow other tribes to destroy what say has been happening or to destroy their states and i was uh, wondering with all of these problems happening and this is what this man could come up with okay these are the these are the, these are the people that really sold these narratives to the public i think it would be better if uh, that is what they want and I'm just surprised. We have been hearing a situation, a, a, a incident of what has been happening in in in, in Yoruba land, in all over the country. The S men dealing with them, at least the one that happened in Oyo State, with some communities in Oyo State. That this man came out. What is this man's name? The Ariel Nokakanfu and some other people, prominent people. And this guy that has been going on this whole thing, uh, Sunday Boho or something like that. The the people who are taking their lives on a daily basis. You have not come as people who are taking your life on a daily basis, stressing your people, even according to what uh, Ariel Nokakanfu has said. And a lot of people have testified to that. People have been coming out that uh, these people, these Fulani S men, they've been terrorizing them. You never said anything. You never even made anything. You were quiet. Some days back again, we saw Lagos and uh, um, Yorubas and uh, what is it called? The Abusa Fulani, you know, clash in uh, Fagbua, one of the communities in Lagos. You guys have not, you don't even deem it, but those who are bringing, making the economy, bringing uh, businesses to your domain, those are the ones now you are telling to leave your your country or your state as the case may be. And also, this answers of a thing, because your leaders have failed you, 
your your monarchs have failed you. The so-called Ashiwaju, all of them, they have failed you. You are now looking the other way around. What kind of hypocrisy is this? I'm just surprised. Because if I'm, like I said, this guy was on a mission some years back. All of a sudden, he, you know, he calmed down. So if I'm hearing again from this guy, I would have thought that, okay, mm, you may have started again. But for, uh, uh, from the so-called leaders, especially the deputy governor, coming out to tell the people, telling the people that it is the people from other tribes, they are the ones uh, who want to destroy your, your state. And also, the incident that happened, the a whole sitting governor, who is the chief security officer of the state, said the whole thing is beyond its control. From where? Okay, it is the Igbo people too. So it is the Igbo people that are destroying your farmlands. It is the Igbo people that uh, 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 caused uh, this man to disappear. Or wherever he went to, the Ashiwaju, that now came out and began to, to, to laugh over those things that really happened. Or is the same Igbo people that uh, ordered soldiers. Now they are trying to trivialize the whole thing. That, oh, nobody died, nobody did this and that. How can, but you can, initially they said, oh, it was not the army. Now, how can a sitting a governor or a sitting government will not be able to say, who are the people, if I thought that you are not, you you are not, you don't know anything about this whole thing, you cannot even find out who were the people that were there. Even the president did not say anything. If I thought they are trying to make a, a, make excuse that, oh, yes, it is a, they didn't know anything about it. At least that should give you a, a, a great signal to go after those people because you believe that these people are your citizens. Then who could have done this? The question people have been asking, if you have a child that is so stubborn, so the next thing, or he refuses to do what you want to do, or does not listen to you, disobeying you. So the next thing is just to carry this in, to take the child's life. If it, that is what people are saying. Because a lot of narratives are there. Oh, they have told them to leave the streets. Leave the streets. Why? Why would they leave the streets? The people who are organizing and the hoodlums, go after them. You cannot go after them. But peaceful protesters, you went there, you did all, all you could do. Now they are trying to tell us it is Photoshop. So now the old people, the monarchs could not say, they would not, we've not even had anything from all these monarchs. All these uh, uh, Obas in the Yoruba land with this incident that happened. No, they didn't say it. But now they want to shift blame because they have failed in their responsibilities. They are now shifting blame to other people. No, I can say that uh, what happened in Oyos, it, it is the Igbo, Igbos that orchestrated it. Uh, see all the palliatives they are sharing. I'm sure it is the Igbos that connived. They are the ones that connived with uh, all the governors to, to hide palliatives. You guys are suffering. Everybody is suffering. You are not looking at that. I don't just even know. No wonder when some when these people are saying something, you just be wondering that, ah, why are they talking like this? But a lot of people who do not know history, who do not even follow events, because some people just believe that they are okay. Oh, this is what uh, somebody has said. A lot of people, and they, they are all over online joining the bad wagon. Even if physically they are joining the bad, bad bad wagon, they will tell you them something. They will not even have their own mind to so let us even think through. The next thing, they've just joined the wagon without even thinking or just looking at things holistically. Well, since he has given the uh, order, let us see how he's going to carry it. At least it started since on Friday, which is the uh, 23rd, so 25th today. So as from tomorrow, this guy is in, where is he? He's in, he's in UK. Uh, UK. Let us see whether he will fly down or maybe he already has uh, his entourage or whatever is uh, people that are going to do that we are waiting for him let them carry on check your problem no you are not going to do look at what is happening to you no you are not doing that hmm. so guys uh, you'll be surprised at the reactions of people someone says this is hate crime against a people a tribe nigerians and must be treated as such nigerians in the uk please take this guy to to the rehab or mental facility now hmm he can't be instigating violence and is left alone. Uh, another person says here that uh, I wonder why this guy has not been labeled a terrorist by concerned authorities. I can't believe he isn't behind the bars by now over there. <laughs> if it is so funny how they will live 5,000 miles away and incite violence at home, he should be arrested. Of course, like I said, I wouldn't have even taken him seriously. You know, he's been on this journey for some time now. But when the so-called governor saying that the other tribes, it, it speaks volume. It speaks volume. They will not come out. They are, they are beginning to let, you know, and if you go online and if you go, you know, people, they are beginning to say that the Igbos are the ones that orchestrated, orchestrated this whole thing. And we need to ask, does it mean the Igbos are behind the armies that came, that the, or the Igbos are the ones that put off the lights? 
Because if you are saying okay, it was the Igbo, because you are, you are trying to look at the old thing that happened, who put up the light at the toll gate? Sinubu's son came out and said, oh, they did that on the order because it's the owner of that uh, uh, big board or whatever and the lighting, that it was on the order of the governor that they switched off the lights and these people came and do what they do. Oh, I'm sure maybe it is the Igbo people that advised the Tinubu boy or Tinubu's son to do the same thing. So, guys, I am just speechless. Let us hear your opinion concerning this because, like I said, I would have overlooked him because he's been, been on this thing for some time. But if a sitting deputy governor could be saying that uh, the people should not allow other tribes, it speaks volumes and that narrative is there in the public domain. Leave your comment, guys, below and let's have your take. Thank you.